Orlando heute Abend bei uns als Gast im Rock Palace. Dire Straits. on first hey brother humanist thank you sorry about the mic just wanted to give you a very a quick uh, 
good evening. Hey, Road Chess Master. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Brother Hermanis, for joining us. Welcome to my best losses Monday. Let me just briefly adjust this camera a little bit. So, um, yeah, that's that's better. It's good to see you guys. Welcome to tonight's edition of my best losses on Monday. Tonight's time is... Uh, Oh, thank you very much, Brother Humanist. It's my pleasure. Anyway, uh, so just uh, wanted to say today's edition of My Best Losses Monday is actually dedicated to my match against the man Hamilton, a grandmaster that I played yesterday that I lost. Uh, basically, I lost 10 games in a row, but I think... Uh, um, and strangely that uh, this particular match, uh, I felt that uh, I'm the opposite opposite of the way I felt after a, uh, about the match against uh, WGM Kiyu Zhao. For the simple reason that uh, I felt they played actually quite well. I had plenty of chances and it wasn't a necessarily a very, it was actually a very nice match. And, uh, you know, uh, I was obviously happier with the result the week before because I managed to avoid being adopted twice and here I got adopted. But in many ways this was not, uh, my play was actually better. Anyway, just uh, wanted to give a quick overview and then we're going to switch into watch into these um, into very quick stream. I have selected basically three games from the match. Uh, the very first game and then the game number five and the very last game. So in other words, there is a game from the very first game of the match, the very beginning of the match, then the then the middle game and finally the very last game um, in terms of uh, preparation for the match i have never really had any success playing against aman uh, he's a very he's a strong uh, grandmaster and he actually plays very well in these uh, matches against subs and he's also a gentleman and a very good player, so it was actually a pleasure playing against him. Uh, however, uh, I'm going to start with the very first game. It's, uh, it was a Sicilian. Uh, and uh, it was basically, and I'm going to switch to analysis mode. It was basically Taimanov Sicilian after E6. Uh, you know... I have, to, I have an admission to make that, you know, I'm, while I'm reasonably good in opening preparation, this wasn't a very, this is not one of my favorite uh, variations of Sicilian. I would much rather play Yugoslav attack against, hey, Everson Jazz, thank you, thank you for joining us, good to see you too, my friend. I'm going to show briefly three games that I played against Grandmaster Amma Hamilton yesterday. So this is the very first game, and it's Taiman of Sicilian. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, and uh, this is all standard normal moves. And I have to admit that I am still struggling with the logic of how to you know, how to fight in this QC7 uh, edition of uh, Taimanov, which computer calls best for variation. Hey, Drunk Pyromaniac, thank you for joining us. It's always very good to see you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's good to see you here. Anyway, so I'm usually struggling in this uh, variation and, uh, you know, I this is one of those situations in which I understand the moves, but I'm not sure I understand completely the logic of the position. Uh, so, you know, all of these are normal moves. Bishop e3 is usually not considered uh, the best option here, but I actually don't mind playing it because uh, in most variations of Sicilian, I prefer to... 
you know, cast long and hope for an attack. And I decided to stay and play with, with something that I was comfortable. Uh, this was the very first game of the match and uh, in subsequent game, which was also a Sicilian game, I played Marozzi Bind. Yes, Drunk Pyromaniac, they, they were at 5 plus 2, which was, you know, a reasonably slow blitz time control. Anyway, so this is, uh, you know, normal, normal development. Oops, I managed to screw this up. My apologies, guys. Uh, some of these fast mice have some of this advantage. So takes, takes, queen c7, f4, standard normal development moves, a6, uh, bishop e3, b5, and, uh, you know, queen d2 is a standard preparation for, for long castle. Obviously, the threat here is that white at some point can play b4. And uh, in, the interesting aspect of this position is that, and I'm gonna switch to analysis back, is that, you know, black keeps this king side rather undeveloped, which is actually gonna come into play later in the, later in the game. So bishop b7, uh, castle long, uh, then, and here is an interesting situation here. Um, you know, it might have been, you know, Aman didn't play this game very precisely. And, uh, you know, Queen C8 is actually a huge blunder. And huge blunder for the very simple reason that it um, allows something that I actually didn't play, which was to take... Um, the best move is to take on the b5 here, which is actually a common threat. And then after takes, knight takes, and then here is the compelling motive in this position. The compelling motive here is that this pawn on d7 is actually being uh, attacked. And the only thing, and it's a threat, it's a mating threat. So in other words, uh, you know, white absolutely has to, you know, defend that pawn because if queen were to go somewhere like queen b8, you know, uh, queen d7 is mate. So a queen really has exactly one move to make and it, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, there is an option to play queen d4, but with any normal move, even queen d8, there is this particular strike, and then it's, uh, you know, the best option for computer is to play bishop b4, and that's actually not very pleasant for, you know, for white, there is a knight d6 check, and the whole sorts of ugly things coming their way. So the best option for black is actually to play something along the line of queen e7 and then, believe it or not, uh, white has an option to claim a draw because these are actually the best moves in this position. Bottom line, hey, Golden Lion, thank you for joining us. Uh, hey, Kibi Khan, my friend, uh, thank you for joining us. I'm showing uh three games from my match with Aman yesterday so so basically uh you know it would have been you know it, it would have been a uh, one position for white literally after the very first game after 10 uh, worried about the recent lawsuit against twitch uh, which one? Twitch actually had multiple lawsuits uh, worried about it. If you're worried about the, the music, it's actually under public. Uh, this is supposed to suppose it in the public domain. So, uh, but if you're, you know, hey, Archangel 75 AR, but uh, I, I beat GM Studer. Um, you know, if there is another lawsuit that I'm not familiar with, please do share. I'm, I am not familiar with any of the lawsuits that apart from that one. Anyway. All right, so to going back to the position, 
Hey, thank you, Archangel75, AR, greetings for Argentina. How are you doing, my friend? I've never been to Argentina, hope to go there uh, soon, very soon. So anyway, to go back to the game, in other words, I had an opportunity to see uh, this, uh, to basically, you know, uh, win the game on the very first try, or at least, uh, you know, draw. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, IP James Studio. That's very, that's very kind of you. But uh, my days of, uh, you know, be doing that uh, are, I think, past me. But thank you again. Anyway, so, uh, hey, Major Tommaso, thank you. Greetings from Bulgaria, Bratko. Nice to, nice to see you. Thank you. As, uh, s as most of you probably know, I grew up in Serbia. I live in New York these days for the past 25 years, in fact. But... Yes, uh, hey Kitty, it's good to see you. Basically, knight b5, and that's what we were showing. Knight b5, knight b5, knight b5 was basically winning. Funny thing is, and this is uh, sadly the problem, and why I basically, you know, I'm showing you this game and why I ended up being adopted. Uh, I did not see, I actually considered the take. But I think, and this is where my library of chess motifs fails me, I wasn't aware, I, you know, I didn't see that Queen D7 was made as I was playing it. Call it nerves, call it first game syndrome, call it whatever way you want. Though I was much, much more comfortable in this match than in a match against Chiyu, where I was actually quite nervous. But, uh, you know, this is a one position by by white it's 470 and you know bishop b6 and then where is this queen going and a push opportunity to draw very quickly anyway that stayed aside i basically missed it instead i played uh, e5 which computer judges as a missed win and then you know knight d4 knight d bishop takes the d4 knight d7 with another inaccuracy by a man i think it was you know to a man's credit he was playing this game on only four hours of rest and he was streaming fairly late before the night before and he was you know he got up very early which i think is like 10 a.m to play this match against me so anyway so this on the other opportunity to grab on b5 i actually saw and you know i took on b5 and then after knight d5 i made you know the first in series of blunders that will ultimately cost it cost me this game the best move is basically to take on d5 take some d5 or even the taking with a bishop is actually better and then you know maintain this uh, threat against the d7 pawn but i am afraid i suffered you know and this is actually a very comfortable position for white it's probably not directly winning but it was definitely a nice position and nicer than the one that ended up mind you uh, even in the position that uh, in the game Hey, Frappuccino, it's good to see you, my friend. Uh, even in the position in the game, after knight d5, I played bishop d3, which kind of loses the bulk of its advantage. But even here, and this is a slightly annoying pin, I was under the impression, okay, I'm a pawn up. Uh, you know, I am... I actually have a better position. The pieces are on the... The white, st black still needs to castle. Uh, so I should... You know, I should be at least be drawing this position, nothing else. Unfortunately, as you can say, I started proceeding much too timidly. I was basically moved to King B1 so I can take on D5 so that Bishop takes D2 is not with a check. But of course, the man wasn't going to let me do it. And he actually had a better version of it, which is King A5. Bishop takes D3, Bishop takes C3. King, uh, queen takes on c3 and after this i lose a pawn and i have to make an admission i have uh underestimated the uh 
the difficulties that White faces in this particular position. Hey Reagan0001, it's very good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I, misunder I basically you know, misunderestimated this position. I thought it was better for White than it really is. Uh, and the reason it's actually not very good for white is that first this king here is not in a very good spot you know and uh, in many ways it's uh, you know it's threatened and second uh, once uh, black manages to move his king to e7 and put the rook on c8 there are immediate threats to the to the white king and I made a strategically bad decision to basically sacrifice this pawn hey Durkia it's good to see you my friend thank you thank you Durkia thank you for joining us I'm showing a couple of gays for my match against Aman Hamilton yesterday so I basically decided that I'm gonna mobilize uh, and try to fight this um, I also was under the impression that, you know, I might be able to play rook g1 if uh, there is a capture on g2, but then only after I saw that, I realized that, you know, after takes on g2, I really don't have time to really play uh, rook g1 because, uh, you know, black has this nice little tactic and if I take on g7 this kind of threatens the rook and all of a sudden rook is uh, rook is basically trapped unfortunately i saw this only after i made made rookie one move so that didn't really help me so you know bishop e4 obviously another inaccuracy and rook e4 and here i'm already in a slightly uncomfortable position and uh, one thing that i learned in this match is that i generally considered um end games to you know be one of my advantages or that put it this way strength of my game that really doesn't mean that uh, uh, you know, when I'm playing a Grandmaster, my endgame technique has very serious flaws. That's also going to show in the game number five that you guys will see uh, a little bit later. Anyway, so after rook b8, uh, you know, king a1 is actually not good. a5, rook b1, you know, I'm already in a pretty bad position here and... You know, I'm not going to really commentate this very much. I was kind of hoping to get this a4 pawn and gather some counterplay, but unfortunately it really wasn't there. And after this, obviously it was time to, to, uh, to resign. So to just to give give you guys a little bit of overview of this uh, you know opening was perfectly fine uh, you know and you know i missed this motive of strike on d7 i should have played ta you know, take on d5 and you know this it would have been a very nice win a very quick win or a draw in the very first game of the adoption match uh, a man actually gave me another chance and you know i actually took it but of course you know uh, this is way too passive a move i switched into let me defend the pawn i have acquired bishop a4 if you look at this variation would have been a much better game and uh, you know the the lesson learned here is very simple one you know if you have a winning attack uh, if you're playing somebody as strong as a man uh, you know getting into what you think is a better end game is actually not a good strategy and uh, you know the rest was basically oops i'm sorry is not i don't even know where we went here but it was it was a missed opportunity to 
achieved the, basically the same result I achieved in the Chiyu match, which was basically defeat adoption of the very first game. Anyway, um, so that was game one. In game two, uh, I'm not going to show you games two, three, and four for the simple reason that then in game four, um, game three, we played a, a Sicilian again. I switched to Marazzi bind and I ended up game, getting out, outplayed in the middle game. It wasn't a very instructive game. I didn't play very well. Um, I'm going to show you game in, when we show game 10, I'm going to show you because in every game as black, I play, played uh, King's Indian uh, defense. And uh, although from a competitive standpoint, it wasn't a very good, uh, wasn't a very good result. It was actually quite uh, instructive and interesting from a standpoint of my opening preparation. Uh, so we're going to fast forward uh, through to game five which I consider to be my very best game in the match because you know uh, here in the game number one I missed uh, one move opportunity and in this game as you will see I actually managed to build up over a period of time a winning attack and then of course managed to mess, mess it up but, but let's let me show you so this is French defense you know, Vinaver variation. I play French uh, exchange against Vinaver as a matter of course. Hey, Smash Time Tools, thank you for joining us. And especially, you know, against, uh, you know, as the Grandmaster, I'll play French exchange against Vinaver any anytime. Um, Bishop d3, all of these are basically book moves. And, you know, uh, none of this is a, is a particular um you know uh, you know computer is over exaggerating this position for black this is a completely nice and equal position and you know bishop g6 knight e2 which is actually a standard move in this in this particular position um and after bishop d6 knight f4 i think uh, you know uh, not to question a grandmaster's moves but i think this castling long was a little bit optimistic because uh, frankly as you will see i think white is better prepared to attack i think what the man was hoping to get through is to exchange all minor pieces and i think he actually mentioned as he was commentating as he was playing on the bra channel uh, he was kind of hoping that he will be able to uh, exchange all the minor pieces and then basically outplay in a heavy pieces endgame, which was actually a perfectly logical strategy. Anyway, I played c3, which computer considers inaccuracy. I disagree with that. And uh, my... Hey, chess, uh, chess lover. Hey, <laughs> welcome to the stream. I'm showing games from my match with Aman. Because c3 is actually not a prophylactic move is um, the plan here is to prepare b4 and a4 which is actually going to be played in this game so after some exchanges um, and you know b4 was played aman took on f4 bishop f4 takes on d3 uh, you know queen d3 and i think the assessment here was that um, uh, there is not enough firepower for white to kind of conduct an attack in this position. Um, and I, you know, I think that as a result of all those exchanges, it simplified the position and ended up with this fairly strong bishop that's actually kind of hitting the black king where it hurts. And, uh, you know, this knight is kind of, it's a nice knight, but it really needs, needs several jumps to get anywhere. You know, and, you know, computer is saying plus 0 0.94. I, I think that's an exaggeration. It's not, it's nowhere near that good. But I popped this into Lila and Lila is saying something about 0 
plus uh, 0.60, which I think is probably accurate. Anyway, so we are playing and for the record, you know, after 16 moves, I'll take this position against uh, Amon any, any day of the week, which is, you know, so A4, best move. Knight e7, which is a good move. B5, you know, it's uh, the white plan is simple: push, push the pawns as quickly as you possibly can, and uh, you know, open this position up and use your heavy pieces and this fairly strong bishop to mate black, mate the black king as quickly as you can. So rook e8 is uh, the best computer move. You know, queen g4 was an alternative it's fine a5 g5 and here i had a decision to make and i think in retrospect i made the wrong decision here um i the two moves for bishop are basically e5 to go to e5 or to go to g3 g3 is allows uh, you know black to gain a tempo by playing h4 and then h5 uh, h and then h4 which is why i didn't play it because h5 would immediately necessitate this and i really also wanted to block this rook but on the other hand it allowed this rather passive knight to get exchange after knight g6 for this rather nice bishop so in retrospect you know i know if you look at the computer evaluation here it's between B bishop g3 and bishop e5 i would have probably preferred that i re retreated to to g3 uh you know but anyway uh, this is a position in which if you haven't noticed the white's advantage is slowly climbing and uh, you know I'll take it. What was played is bishop e5. Inaccuracy, agreed. Bishop g3. I don't think this is that much of a difference, but uh, there is a difference. Queen e6, uh, rook b1, which, you know, computer likes f4. I was, uh, I was under the impression then and there that this attack is where the stuff is being decided. Uh, all right, knight g6, best move. Obviously, I'm not counting pawn. I'm pushing b6. And, uh, you know, the thing here is that what computer considers inaccuracy, you know, 95, which is what was ended up with playing, I think, uh, you know, it's pretty hard for, you know, black to play these uh, th these positions because you know this it's sorry queen d4 king c7 at, at some point i felt at the time that this open position of the black king will be to to white's advantage that wasn't what happened in the game hey fertila magica thank you for the follow that's very greatly appreciated um, what was played was, um, hold on, let me see, so instead of b6, instead of knight d5, Aman took on b6, it was take, takes again, and then a6, which is actually not a very good move. Um, in other words, uh, that move, uh, and I'm, you know, I if you look here, I didn't even really think about it this is 207 in two seconds i said uh, you know what i'm taking this bishop on uh, you know and if you look closer it, this is actually it wasn't played but this is uh you know this is a rather nice mate of course uh, you know aman wasn't gonna let that happen so so instead of taking on rook a, after rook a6, he took the bishop, which is actually the best move, takes on e5, and queen d7, you know, running away as, as fast as one can, one can do it. And this is where, you know, rook a7 is the best move, uh, rook b8 is actually, rook c6 is the better move according to the computer, and I agree. And this is, the rook a7 is also the last 
quote unquote best move that I played in this position. Uh, you know, computer likes uh, you know computer likes several moves in this position. Hey, Joel Rubs, it's very good to see you. Thank you, thank you for joining us. You know, um, there, you know, I here was. And I have to admit, I this is where I started to be a little bit, I don't want to say nervous, but started to think, wow, I am actually winning this game. And frankly, this is the first time I felt that way because that uh, knight takes some b5 thing in, in game one, I didn't see. So I was, I was like, okay, so what's the best way for me to convert, uh, convert the advantage here? And, you know, I'm not necessarily criticizing myself for not playing computer best move, which is rook e1, but I should and could have played rook a5. And rook at a5 would have been a very easy win because, uh, you know, the... Oh, um, uh, hey, I beat GM Studer. Uh, just uh, time discrepancy, let's be very frank. Um, for um, for a grandmaster among Hamilton, four minutes is an eternity. He can play 300 moves in four seconds. You know, I I'm obviously have a huge advantage of time, but four seconds with a two second increment. Um, I think a man can play you know a hundred games with just four seconds of the clock, and you know he's just uh, very fast. Yes. Rook e5 was an easily winning move and, you know, that's a move that I should have found. I don't think that h4 makes sense. Even something along the lines of, you know, queen b5 is, you know, it's just a blunder. Okay, you know, it was, was c4 and which is what they played ended up transposing into an endgame that uh, uh, all the advantages of a man's technique came into play and that's how I ended up actually losing this game. Uh, you know, and for the record, honestly, a man probably could have played, you know, um, I've seen a man play 40 moves in four seconds, um, you know, but obviously, you know, four seconds without the pre two second increment is very different than four seconds with it. So, anyway. All right, so I, a man took, I took, and I shouldn't have taken. I should have played g3, so I don't need to exchange queens. And with relief, which is he said then and there, a man force a queen exchange. And here I have, you know, I have. A position that I'm a pawn up, which should be objectively drawn, uh, but you know it's uh, and again this happened to me for the second time in this match. I have a end game that's marginally better or equal that I underestimate the difficulties. You know this pawn is not immediately dead but it's too advanced this pawn is a weakness and obviously you know after rookie five i had to play i know i i don't know what f3 was all about i think i was worried about my back rank or something i i you know this uh, motive with rook a5 was uh, there throughout and I should that should have been played if for nothing else because that prevents the black king from coming to attack the b6 pawn. And you know rook d5. The, the I shouldn't have exchanged the rook. A rook a5. And this is actually I played. The, I look this on the board, and this actually should still be savable for white with uh, any kind of decent play, but. Uh, uh not for the first time in my chess career not for the last time i didn't make a proper transition from uh playing to win the game to playing to draw the game and i made the 
you know and the rest i'll spare you the details i made a bunch of inaccuracies and i ended up kind of losing this which was quite upsetting and uh, you know i even found some you know queen d2 is actually not the best move and i was almost thought for a second that i would be able to save this but uh you know the best move here evaded me which was basically to play uh, you know immediate f4 and that would have some tactic practical things but bottom line hey zyme a it's good to see you thank you for joining us i'm showing uh, games from my match with uh, grandmaster Amman hamilton yesterday um so i have you know so i've lost this end game basically my end game technique uh, wasn't there when i needed it and yeah as long as the queen is you know not not around unfortunately the king was too you know they were too close to the beginning to right here and this pawn was of g5 which means it mean creating two connected pawns was there instead of i ended up having you know two disconnected pawns and i'll show you to this to the bitter end and this was not savable and you know this was mate and that was the end of the game um yes when i see magic that's exactly right so uh i'm not very unhappy about my you know i am actually this is the, my best game in this match um uh, by uh, yes thanks thanks drunk pyra yeah i got it thank you um you know um i think until about my handling of the position until this uh, blunder you know c4 is something i blame myself for i should have you know rook a5 was perfectly natural move that i should have found and that would have given me all opportunities to play for the win especially since you know the natural the natural move which would be something along the side of king c6 this is a very beautiful nice mate and you know i probably and if i look at the time i spend only three seconds i really wish i spent uh, 13 on 30 and that i made the decision to play rook a5 because um with the queens when the queens left the board my attack is over and the most of the black white's advantage uh, evaporated so you know but uh, the you know the preparation of the attack starting here with the c3 after the exchanges and then pushing of the pawns and you know i'm not faulting myself hey lolly it's good to see you thank you i know it's very late for you i'm showing the analysis uh, of my game with uh, aman yesterday we are now showing the game five and you know let me put it this way um I don't want to hear make any statements about my adva uh, advance in chest strength because that's uh, not really accurate or anything but uh, yeah passive heavy pieces are not very useful that's exactly right oh thanks thanks lally good to hear i'm very happy that you're beating that i have seen you beat 2400 to 2500 title guys so it's always good to see you i'm not uh, i don't think i'll ever get there but so good luck uh you know and here what i'm very proud is that uh, you know a year ago hey twitch let's go hey <laughs> how are you going uh this is a fellow streamer and it's very good to see you uh, let's give her a quick shout out twitch let's go is yeah and i think and did i manage to no let's see uh, what what am i missing here sorry let's see let's give the, can you give you a shout out
Anyway, so I'm showing... Um... Oh, thanks. I guess my shout out uh, command doesn't work tonight. Oh, all right. That's... I don't know why maybe Mubot decided to act out on me or went on strike. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Lali. That's very greatly appreciated. Anyway, so she's a fellow streamer and she's one of the members of the uh, mid-teens uh, chess community with uh, Justin and uh, Agent GL and Kimi Liu and Hans. So please give her a shout out and give her a follow. I enjoy, enjoy her, stre her streams a lot. Anyway, uh, in 2020, I think uh, in 2018 or 2017, I wouldn't have made the Rook A6 move. Um, in mid-2020, that was instantaneous move in a couple of seconds. So I guess that constitutes some sort of a progress. And, you know, it's... Uh, uh, it's... Mm, uh, to the extent that one can be happy with those losing 10 games in a row, I'm actually pretty happy with my play in, in this match. Uh, you know, this is a very good. So, anyway, yeah. Anyway, so, so you know, and uh, I hope there will be a time when this, the end games of this kind, I will be able to actually play, play better. Hey Everettville, it's very good to see you. And you know, this is this is a needlessly messed up endgame, but it was, you know, I I don't it's a matter of technique, and technique is something that one can presumably learn or gather with experience. So these are two of my best games. Uh, uh, both of those games for with white, I generally play better with white and with black. But uh, the last game of this, and this is going to be a shorter stream than usual, uh, because um, is the very last game of the match. And there is one, you know, further admission I want to make. I kind of uh, lost three games after this rather quickly for the very simple reason that uh, I was still upset about the loss in, in, about the game five. And that's something I need to learn not to do. And then in, uh, in one of those games, uh, I timed out because my internet disconnected and all of a, and all of a sudden, you know, I, I lost, didn't lose the game on timeout. By the time internet connected, I only have like five seconds and I lost. Yeah, well, let me put it this way, I don't think anybody will ever learn how not to tilt, but, uh, you know, and uh, uh, let's, let's be frank, if you look at uh, Magnus, Magnus tilts, you know, that's something that, you know, tilting is human. And, uh, you know, I should have probably, I even took a little break after game five, and I'm, uh, you know, be, uh, but it... Uh, it wasn't enough you know this is one of those games that you want to take a 24 hour break after after missing this opportunity to win a game against a grandmaster um, i'm going to show you uh this game which is the last game this is the best game with black um, because it's a demonstration of uh, virtually all games we played uh, uh, you know, we played five games as black. Uh, I played five games as black, and in all of those games, we played various variations of King's Indian. And we contested the Samish variation, and I think I finally found the var variation I want to play, which is based on knight c6 and then a6, knight a5 and push b5. I think it was a little bit too optimistic because I only discovered that variation about, you know, a day before. Yes, and, um, you know, I didn't really have the proper feel for the position. But uh, here, and this is very interesting, uh, you know, this is normal King's Indian defense. It's worth noting that uh, when I was growing up, you know, when I was a teenager studying chess, Bishop d3 was considered to be, uh, you know, a move one shouldn't play as white in, as King's Indian because 
whatever one does, you know, after you have this, uh, you know, pawn structure with e4, d5, and c4, this knight is kind of boxed in, and blah, 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 that its position is on e2, where it defends, uh, you know, defends against uh, black king side attack, which usually comes with these pawns being pushed, and so on and so forth. So that was the logic between you know, knight in King's Indian belongs on e2. I still remember the reading about that in one of the opening manuals. What happened? Uh, yeah, and a knight with two. Um, the and a man actually described in the stream, and actually he's uh, he streamed this on the Brown channel, and you can listen. And I'm gonna post the VOD uh, on both our channels. Uh, above my channel which with his commentary on YouTube actually later tonight the you know the logic is that you know after Bishop d3 uh, if if the knight, any of the Knights come on e5 or c5 uh, white can play Bishop c2 and then he can develop the Knight on e2 and that Knight on e2 in this variation is actually better placed than on f3 which stands to reason um, and you know I am so to I think it's uh, you will see it we played basically a similar position more than once and e5 is a standard movie Kings Indian d5 and I have another admission to make one of the huge advantages of me preparing for this match was that I found the variation uh, against this early d5 that I'm finally comfortable with and I actually played it since in, in, a, in a blitz games it's basically a early a5 followed with knight a6 uh, I kind of have a feeling that uh, you know this particular setup and you will see it and it was repeated in more than one game in the match is you know advantageous for black and this is in other words this is now almost the standard position of uh, for me in king's indian and this is a standard position for this line that a man played that uh, i actually haven't experienced this but uh, anyway, we'll see. Bishop e3, which, you know, bishop g5 is considered better. That's subject to some debate. b6, which solidifies this particular, you know, structure. That basically, you know, in King's Indian, normally white counterplays along the c file and it pushes b4, c5 and then tries to hit the c7 pawn i kind of like this this is a very resilient structure this bishop patrols these diagonals and these pawns kind of form a barrier and that's a very good defensive setup in king's indian i actually like this a lot and i'm gonna play that uh, i think as my standard part of my standard repertoire anyway so to you know, to uh, cut the long story short, castling and knight h5 is a standard move, followed by f5. Uh, Aman was even joking in uh, his stream that, oh yeah, if, you know, this is coming, this is coming, this is coming. And here is a rather interesting uh, situation here. You know, um, obviously, you don't want to allow f4 even after f3 because that's a main, classical mainline king's indian with uh, which in which my apologies in which blacks attack on the king side um the what a man played and this for me was a revelation he played he took and took and then played f4 and uh, this was my first time experience with this position. Computer kind of uh, likes it, in other words, doesn't dislike it terribly. But, you know, after e4, uh, it's you, you end up in a rather interesting position in which 
you know, material is balanced and G file is open, which is stuff that normally for favors black and kings Indian. Uh, but, you know, uh, white has a standard plan, which is to bring the bishop to D4 and then after the exchange brings the knight and then knight can get quite annoying. Um, so, you know, I only played ever these two games with Aman in this position, so I can't really speak to it, but this is apparently a very fashionable, fashionable line in 20, uh, in 2020. Um, and in the previous games, uh, the, the decision turned around, these two pawns are potentially weak, this is a four and a five for both sides. And, uh, you know, I kind of felt that I still have a little bit of an attack and, uh, you know, that these pawns are about as equally weak. And, you know, having played this already once, you know, I felt that, you know, I can probably play this. And rook f7 is a standard move, uh, knight d1. In other words, it's kind of, sh you kind of don't want to, you want to defend against g2 and knight, you know, rook on g7 and so on and so forth. So I exchanged the bishops and then I moved the rook on g7. And you know, for a game 10 of an adoption match, uh, you know, I for once, uh, this is probably too high, but I put this into Lila, and Lila judges this to be minus 125, which is actually the best evaluation I had as black whole match. Um, why? Well, uh, you know, this bishop, once this bishop moves, there is, uh, and you will see I actually played a lot of best moves in this position. Uh, this bishop is not going anywhere, you know, it's biting granite. This rook is is stuck and on top of it, there, white doesn't have any open or half open file that it can develop the rooks. This rook is hitting this pawn on e4 and it's not immediately obvious how <clears throat> white can undermine the pawn chain here. g4 is suicidal. And attacking this pawn is, it's, this pawn is pretty hard to get to because, you know, after something like knight e3, queen f6, then anyway. I would be more than happy to play this position multiple times uh, and, uh, you know, I kind of felt that, you know, maybe I'll have a miracle and be able to draw the game, game 10 or even win it. I, I judge, judge this position to be a very good uh, you know, anyway, yes, exactly. King's bishop is passive, but king rook is locked. Uh, knight, on, uh, knight on d1 is kind of not, it's a totally defense, defensive piece. This is a better position for, for black. It's probably close to winning, but anyway. Um, in a game, another game that we played before, um, I actually flagged in that game because I spent too much time thinking and uh, this was a completely unfamiliar position. So yes, knight e3 is the best position and I played knight g3, which computer doesn't uh, like, considers queen f6 to be the best, but I like it because this knight is mightily annoying. It also defends this pawn on f5 and it kind of restricts white. I don't regretting playing it, playing this move, the contrary, I think that was actually probably the best, the best move, best human move in the position. Uh, yes, uh, knight to knight six, that's, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you, like Paramaniac. So, anyway, so rookie one, best move, knight h4, inaccuracy, okay, thank you, Stockfish, uh, chill. Uh, rook f2, queen f2 is best, and then, you know, this is considered a mistake because what computer wanted me to play was queen f6 as the question of this rook, and then bring the, bring the, 
rook to g8 and play bishop d7. Uh, you know, what, uh, what remained here was, you know, computer wants to play something along the lines and look at this line. Just I actually want to show this line because it's very interesting to see how computer variations sometimes come into play. So the computer line here is, uh, you know, knight f1. So this is there. Then bishop d7, uh, rook e3. And it appears that, you know, um, you know, white is gaining a piece, but uh, black has this uh, rather interesting resource in which basically, you know, uh, you get, and you're going to capture the, the pawn on c4, uh, because, you know, bishop on b3, a4 is actually very disadvantageous, disadvantage, disadvantageous, God, what's with me tonight? Disadvantageous for uh, for white. Um, I would have played this, and you know, and let's say let's find something, some something silly along the lines of this. I would play this for a black in a tiffy because all of a sudden this pawn is weak. This knight really has little to go. This queen is in an interesting situation. This pawn needs to be defended, and I have a rook and a piece and a pawn um, for uh, for a queen. Um, you know, I was judging at the time this position to be uh, better, but that wasn't played. Uh, I played queen h8, rook f1, bishop d7, and then Amman decided to exchange pieces. And, you know, okay, queen g3 is the best move, takes, takes, and knight e2. And, uh, you know, here is, again, the grandmaster technique in an endgame comes into play. Um, anyway, so at this point, uh, I am a little, I didn't manage to find the proper plan. The proper plan here was to play b5 and kind of activate this bishop. But I really didn't want to allow here g4 because I was uh, needlessly worried that that's gonna, you know, lose me the end game. So I played e3, which is actually a game loss, almost game losing blunder because I'm sacrificing this. And obviously after queen f3, uh, I am, you know, you know. In other words, I should have undermined this chain, this pawn chain, you know, before I pushed on e3, and you know, live and learn. And obviously, I'm now at 15 seconds, and I am obviously at this point, I'm lost, and that was the end of the end game and end of the match. And you know whatever else was played, it really didn't matter. The you know it's not so. All you know this knight is a huge monster. These two pawns are supported by the king. This rook, the black rooks are passive. This knight is a little bit wayward. There is really nothing there to play for, and that was the end of the game. Um, <clears throat> so looking backward. Uh, I think I had my chances here. I think e3 was kind of a cute move that backfired. Uh, I should have kept calm and uh, played something along the lines of, uh, you know, instead of playing e3, I should have played b5 instead. You know, and b, uh, you know, sorry, in this position, I should have played b5 after rook g1 and b5 and that would have kept the advantages for for black i have to make uh, an admission i'm still pretty weak when it comes to this pawn pushes uh, and pawn challenges um you know and uh, this is if you want a pay, uh, failure of technique you're drunk you're saying playing this 
There is a reason why this is an inaccuracy because if what if it takes takes and then knight d4, it's oh sorry. I think uh, the problem with that move was that this pawn is then weak after rook d1, S you know, which is uh, not a threat if you if you play b5. So that's that's the difference because. If it takes, takes, and then rook d1, this pawn needs to be defended. And if you play b5, uh, there, you know, there, white cannot really attack any of, any of the pawns. So that's the difference with, the, yeah, white's uh, queen pawn is a shield. So, um, when all is said and done, um, you know, I don't, I really feel, uh, you know, to summarize again this game, I felt that, you know, after in this king's Indian position, I have reached, you know, I played bishop d4, and, you know, I had a fairly significant advantage all the way to the move 20 against the Grandmaster uh, in, in a well, in a played king's Indian in a position that I haven't seen before. I consider that uh, a plus here. Uh, I obviously need to learn uh, to keep calm and improve my end game technique to the extent possible. I will never be a grandmaster, but uh, there is some room then for uh, uh, because um, you know uh, I basically. Lo these three are my best games in the match and there were a couple of other games in which I had you know an advantage a positional advantage in the middle game or they were equal uh, so you know if I didn't lose those in end games uh, you know objectively this probably could have been a draw and the other two could have been wins uh, I had at least another two games that draw was a positive result. So I'm very happy with the game. I am uh, with, the, with the way I played. I'm very happy with the end results of the opening struggles because, you know, for me finding this a5, bishop a6, bishop c5 motive and finding that I'm actually comfortable in resulting positions is a huge thing. Finding a way to play about um, uh, that uh, I actually have a play against Samish that I'm all of a sudden comfortable with. And uh, all said and done, as I said more than once, hey, National Master Dale, it's very good to see you. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I am uh, showing uh, my adoption match yesterday against uh, Amon Hamilton, which I lost. But, uh, you know, I was very, I was one tactical strike away from winning or drawing the very first game. I think that attack in game number five is pretty, uh, was a pretty good, very well conducted attack. And, uh, you know, openings in, you know i acquired a couple of strong opening lines that are put to good advantage so when all is said and done i think this match from a standpoint of learning the game and practicing the game has been a very um, um you know the very useful to me and by the way drunk pyro i have a youtube channel where i actually post uh, vods from these and you know if you give if you guys give me a follow uh we you know i'm actually posting these i'm gonna actually start posting even more regularly but most of these uh vods from the streams are gonna end up directly on youtube so you guys can watch it at your leisure um so you don't need to block time you i mean obviously i prefer you to come here and watch uh, you know join and uh, i like you guys participating here but uh, when all is said and done, this was um, this was a good match. It was uh, excellent use of my time, and I, uh, of course, uh, it was uh, asking questions is is part of this, and uh, you know, uh, the question here for me is, 
you know, what is the next step. I have a couple of matches lined up. I have a match against uh, WGM Dina Belenkaya that's coming up this coming Sunday. Um, I still have my, uh, you know, uh, uh, lessons with Dana. That's on Wednesdays at 5. And I'm going to continue showing this my best losses uh, as long as uh, you guys find it useful. I find it useful for myself. So, uh, and that also stimulates me to analyze these games. And I think learning from losses is the best thing. Hey, Art Vega, my friend. It's very good to see you. Art Vega is a, is a dear friend and a fellow, fellow streamer. Uh, Art Vega, one thing that, uh, yes, that's not uh, very well known is that Art Vega and I actually played a pair of games and I think we split a pair of games uh, uh, in one of those uh, pro ch uh, chess league matches before it became the province of 2700 Grandmasters. I think I was playing for Armenian Eagles and Art was playing for a Brazilian team and that was fun and Art Vega is... Uh, uh, you know, as a, is a friend of the channel and more than welcome and he's a VIP in the channel now so um, yeah this uh, the song here is there's not the song command the, what we are listening to is the public domain and Lali is gonna write like this this was actually uh, a concert from Rock Palace 1979 by Dire Straits. It's uh, they, it's been recently put in public domain. It's actually just about to finish, which is perfectly uh, fine for this, uh, uh, appropriate for this stream. As I think most of you know, Dire Straits is one of my favorite, best rock group of all time. Anyway, so, so much, uh, yeah, of course, thanks, Drank Pyra. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to continue adopt adoption matches. Uh, I think they're proving to be very beneficial to my chess. Uh, I really do not, uh, obviously, I prefer not to get adopted, but I don't mind being adopted if in the process, you know, I get uh, 10 games against uh, people very strong players, players who are 600 ELO points uh, ahead of me, uh, like Kaman. And uh, as Everett Will said, that's the only way to play 10 games. And, uh, you know, I'm, I keep abusing this uh, comparison, so I abuse it one more time. Um, uh, Karpov uh, was didn't win five games in a row, but he won was leading five nothing against Kasparov in uh, their first match in 1985. Um, that's um, we, end result was that Kasparov, uh, Kasparov became a much stronger player because he played these 40 plus games against Karpov and learned from a lot in the process and he, play, uh, he became in the process one of the strong candidates for the best greatest player of all time greatest players of all time um so what i'm saying is uh, losing 10 nothing against the strong opposition is really good um, i'll do my best to stay above adoption from dina but as i said that's really not the primary task uh, i think i have better chances against dina than against taman yes drunk pyro i have gone through bobby fisher's my 10 uh, my 60 memorable games there is also a book for that's called my 60 additional memorable games. That's also very, very instructive. Um, I have that book on Kindle and I like uh, Bobby Fisher is a very underestimated and underappreciated teacher. I think that's that's a very, very good example. And one thing I'm going to actually tweet at Kasparov one of these days I would really like for him to write uh, you know my great successors book which would be as you know a follow-up to his my great predecessors book but anyway that's uh, that's a topic for, that's a subject for another discussion anyway 
well this uh, this ended up being a little bit shorter stream than expected but i hope this was useful uh i am i'm looking forward to playing against dina next sunday i'm looking forward to whatever anna has to throw at me on wednesday and i have identified and i actually wanted to bring this up at the end of the stream and I wish Kimi, Kimi Liu was here with us because she was a catalyst. Uh, I have um, I have a severe, I have a problem with uh, tactics or if you want my instantly recognizable library of tactical motifs. So I think there will be pr maybe even a fourth stream a week in which I'm going to focus on practicing tactics and not practicing uh, like a kilometer style in which you basically have as much time as you want but something that's kind of timed and gives you a limited of uh, you know limited time to resolve tactics i don't necessarily like puzzle rushes and i'm also not very good at them but that might be a reason to look into those hey pizza racer good morning thank you and i very, very it's very good to see you and uh, 3 a.m i i'm honored that you are that you came to join us at 3 a.m so and for the record i can completely relate i got up at 3 a.m many many times and then you know normally i when i get up at 3 a.m i look at mark Esselman. Um anyway so thank you, you were coming at the end of the stream, I was showing ga three games uh, uh, from Amman. You know, and uh, you know, simple facts here, you know, I should be able in 2020 to see that B5 and after whatever was played in the game to play B5 here. That's such a natural move, but it's a natural move after you see it, um, you know, so and the uh, there are plenty of missed opportunities in these games and matches, but hopefully one of these days, uh, uh, for the same reason, and I'll t uh, see Rook A6 instantaneously, I might be able to see it taking the Knight on B5 instantaneously. So, we'll see. And yes, National Master Day of 3M ch Chess Fix is, uh, is great. Um, the only problem is that when you get the Chess Fix, it's hard to go back to bed after 3 a.m at least that's my experience but that's uh that's that's yet another topic for another conversation well thank you guys thank you for joining us we're gonna the dire straits here have, have finished their concert i am gonna s let's see whom should who do you guys want to raid i don't owe a raid to anyone so, you know, uh, you know, actually, I think uh, Danya and Chiyu are uh, doing an educational stream. I think, yes, I think Danya is coaching Chiyu. So you, you guys may find that interesting. So I'm going to send you to Danya and enjoy. I'll probably join, join you soon. Uh, thanks Art Vega that's that's very kind of you and looking forward to seeing you guys next time I am I'm looking forward to my next match and then we'll go from there thanks thank you again raid is on its way see you Dali and Danya is showing Nimsa to Chiyu that that's going to be very interesting sending the raid over take care pizza racer take care Lali bye guys